Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. So, Abu Bakr, today we're going to help our brothers that invested in some type of a course because they were looking for a business opportunity. It could have been how to set up a, uh, you know, a digital marketing agency or an agency of some sort where you're providing some type of service for business owners. It could have been a person who signed up to a course to learn how to become a PT and train people online. It could have been a course where people, you know, signed up to, to, to some type of a business opportunity, right? They paid anything from $1,500 to $6,000 plus to someone to teach them how to enter a particular market in a particular industry. I want to talk um, to these brothers and fill in the gaps that those courses would have left behind in this podcast, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. And just to give um, the, those who are watching the backstory behind the discussion that we're going to have today. So I've, I, I speak to our customers a lot, right? And our ideal customers, as we all do. And the reason for that is because we provide a service at the Righteous and Rich School to Muslim service-based business owners. And so we can provide the best possible service for them through our coaching and training. It's important for us to know what their biggest problems are because we want to be able to serve you by helping you solve those business problems so that you can scale. So it's not good to be presumptuous and assume you know what their problems are, what their biggest pain points are and what's most valuable to them. You've got to speak to them. So I've been speaking to people on my Instagram over the last week a lot, right? Um, and I noticed that there was a particular group, a particular type of brothers who are struggling with a very unique problem. Now, before we go into the details of this problem and how to help them, I just want to mention very, very clearly that these particular brothers are not our ideal customer, right? In case anyone thinks that we're just trying to make a sale in this video or something like that, like you're not even our ideal customer. For those who may or may not be familiar with, you know, effective sales strategy, when someone books a call with one of your sales team members, you can't just let them get on the call. You've got to qualify the call. Mm. And we score every lead that books a call out of four. And if it's a four, that means this is our ideal customer, someone who has a service-based business who's already making money. And they're making at least £5,000 every month. And then I say, okay, cool. Now you just want to scale and unclog any bottlenecks that are inside your business, whether it be in your sales strategy, your social media strategy, your offer, your management, whatever have you, right? We come in and help you with that funnel optimization, so on and so forth. That's a four. A three is someone who has a business that they've launched, but they are really struggling with deal acquisition. Like they, 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 they are not making a consistent monthly you know, income. And their biggest bottleneck is like, bro, I'm actually stuck. Like, I'm, 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 I am not moving forward. Mm. So that's a three. That person is not even our ideal customer, but it's a three. If we have space on our calendar and that person books a call, we will let that call go through with our sales team, right? So I just want to put that out there. So you know who this is for. By the way, fours, someone who is our ideal customer, could actually benefit from this video as well because we're going to share a lot of timeless business principles that are going to help you grow regardless. Mm -hmm. So coming back to the point now. The threes, which are brothers who have paid money for courses because they saw an influencer online say, this is the next business opportunity, right? It could have been Iman Ghazi, it could have been whoever it is, right? And then they signed up and they purchased, thinking that this is all I need to now set up my business and to scale my business and to reach those 10 figures a month, six figures a month. And you've paid that money and now found yourself in a bit of a predicament because it's not as easy as it was appearing to be prior to you having signed up. All those case studies that you saw in the VSLs that convinced you to buy, where it mentioned this 15-year-old kid is making, you know, just made 20K in, 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 in his first seven days in the program. That inspired you. You're realizing that, you know what? There's something else to it. There's something missing. Now, I want to be very clear. This video is not an attack on anyone that sells such courses, teaching people those opportunities. Not in any way, shape, or form. I do believe some people are a bit um, unclear in regards to how limiting their product or their course actually is. And they make it seem to be more than it, more than it is. And that's, that's wrong. But I think most people who sell an opportunity are just selling you an opportunity. There's a degree of 
naivety in the person who purchased thinking that this was going to be the be, the, 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 be, the, the means all and the be all. For example, we, we taught people how to set up Umrah companies. But right at the beginning of the first lesson, we took a promise from everyone. And I made it very clear that this course is not going to make you a masterful businessman. We're just showing you how to set up an Umrah company. It, well, I'm going to teach you what it says on the title. Do you understand? But in order to grow and scale, oh, I, this is a lifetime of studying and education. And I made it clear at the beginning. And I know a lot of people do that as well, right? But I feel like people go in with this mindset of like, I just need to make money. They see all these case studies and examples that the that the course instructor has with regards to this new opportunity. But bro, that's all it is, it's a new opportunity. And it might be a great opportunity. And sometimes having the right opportunity is half the problem, solved. But the key is, okay, now how do I sell? How do I make money from this new opportunity? How do I take this agency that I've set up or this PT program that I've started, this this service of high ticket sales or growth operation, and now how do I actually make money? Do you understand? Mm. So my job with this video is if we do this justice and we do it for Allah's sake with sincerity, this video is going to be the thing that fills in all of the gaps that that course left behind. Again, it will be foolhardy of you to think that this is going to fill in every single gap. Mm. No. But what we aim to do is give you some type of a bridge that solves the immediate gaps so you can actually start making some type of progress in the long term. And that's what today is about. Anything to say on that? Anything to share? Yeah, I'll just mention, as you said yourself, that with these opportunity uh, businesses, you have to have in your mind, as you said, that this is not the be or the end. There's, there's a wealth of knowledge and uh, education that you need to do outside of that. Like those people usually who are in the testimonials, they went above and beyond. They put in the blood, sweat, the tears. They went out and they learned and they built their following and they did this and they did that to be able to get those results. It's not just a simple case of they came in, they bought the course, they did what it said to do, and that's it, they made money. No, they did, they did what what the course said to do, and then they carried on doing. They learned more and did more, tried, tested new methods, different things, and that's just how it is. Like with any business, you can't go into it thinking, I know everything that I need to know in order for this to be successful. There's always an element of risk, and there's always an element of, you, you can do more, you can learn more. Um, and you might not even realize it, like you might be your own bottleneck, your knowledge, your attitude, your mindset. I know so many people, bro, you give them the keys to the, to the online industry, for example, but their mindset is the bottleneck for them. They just can't fathom how to go about and start taking action. They just don't take action. Like that, that, in, that, in that situation, you've become the bottleneck, not your sales, not your leads, not you know, all these other aspects. So it's just important to be aware, self-aware and accept that bro there's a lot more that's required from you than just the ABCD that's given to you on the instruction sheet or that's delivered to you on the course so we, when you have that mindset it just makes everything after that easy beautiful Barakallah so then just by that very same notion the first thing that we're going to teach them is the theory of constraints now the theory of constraints is very important right because in essence it's just identifying what is the problem mm. like when you the, the, this term bottleneck is funny. I was on my Instagram today and I was speaking to people about what's their biggest bottleneck in high ticket sales. And someone messaged me back saying, what's a bottleneck? I straight away was like, I'm not even going to respond because you are not my idol. You're just, you're just, you're just not the guy I'm making content for. <laughs> Do you get me? So anyway, um, but inshallah, we'll explain what bottlenecks are. You're looking at me like you judged me for that. No, no. Okay. Um, send him the video huh? after. So send him this video I'll after. send him the video inshallah ta'ala look a bottleneck is will you explain it oh beautiful this is a bottleneck see here where the bottle gets thin yeah like if I was to I'm not going to do it but if I was to pour this out the water would come out slowly glug 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 because here it's a lot thinner but if I was to cut this open here it would all empty out in probably a few yeah. seconds and the reason for that is because more water can come out at once. So your business is down here and you're trying to get as much water as possible into your business as fast as possible. The water represents money. If this is there and sometimes like on a Lucas Aid, for example, you know, you get the screw on cap and then mm. you squeeze it and it comes out in one yeah. squirt. That's going to take even longer. So the bottleneck is, it could be your sales, could be your marketing, could be your leads, whatever it is, is preventing the rest of the cash flow from coming 
into your business. And what happens is usually businesses grow up until the point of their next bottleneck, mm. right? So here's the thing. There are like hundreds of things. No, sorry, thousands, tens of thousands of things that you can do to improve your business at any given moment. Mm. The key is, what's the biggest bottleneck? What's the tightest thing that if I could just unclog this, it will allow money to flow in. So understanding and learning the theory of constraints, which is a way of thinking critically to identify these bottlenecks is going to be the biggest thing that's going to help you move forward. Because, okay, cool, look, now you've learned this opportunity, right? But what's, what's missing? And for most people, it's lead acquisition. So then, okay, then, then it's clear. Just, I need to learn marketing. And I need to learn marketing. Pick up a book, bro. Go, forget books, if you don't want to read, Achi, right now. Don't worry, you don't have to buy another course. Go onto YouTube. Type in complete Facebook ad strategy course. You will find amazing courses. Stuff that's better than what people are actually paying for. Mm -hmm. For free. Go to google.com and type in Google Ads course. Google has created their own free training for how to advertise on Google search engine. Right? I'm saying just, just if you've understood that my bottleneck right now, because that's the conversation I have with these brothers. Oh, I'm just struggling with leads. Okay, th that's your bottleneck. You don't know how to, you don't you don't know how to attract leads, mm. right? Okay, if you're getting leads and some brothers are like, okay, but they're not they're, I'm, I'm, they're not they're not they're not paying me. I'm not able to close them on uh, with, 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 uh, in terms of high ticket sales. Well, then you need to learn sales. Okay, well I'm getting them on the sales call, but it's the wrong type of lead. They're interested in something else. So then you're getting leads, but they're not closing because when you're on the sales call, they actually want something else. They're not qualified. Then maybe you're not targeting the right type of person in the content that's getting you leads. So th the point here is you just got to identify what is my constraint. And, and before we move on to the next point, let's see something to add on this. And this is the point that I really want to dive in on here. Yeah, It's that sometimes the biggest constraint in your business is not even something in the business. In fact, unfortunately, I believe more than 90% of the times, the biggest constraint is something in your personal life. The constraint is your wife. Or the constraint is your sins. Because sins directly, like, bro, there's some guys, there's one brother I was talking to, he's, he's actually making content. He's making content. And he's, he actually seems like he knows what he's doing. But he's putting music in his videos. So he's messaging me saying, act, it's just, I didn't get a single lead, which is a bit weird because he's actually putting stuff out there. So I was like, bro, I think you should stop music. Like, huh? that, 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 that is an obstacle. Yeah. That is an obstacle. Like, Allah Azza will prevent rizq, provision coming your way. It's a hadith. Yeah. Bin, because of a sin that you committed, that you transgressed, that you perpetrated. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very important. Like, is, is it a religious constraint? Is it a relationship constraint? Your schedule, your timing, your physical health can even be a thing, your sleep. For me, for years, it was my sleep. Yeah. My sleep was the biggest constraint of the business, right? And for some people, it's ADHD, right? So then you've got to find ways to systems make... Systems and processes. Systems, right? Like you did. I can't believe, yeah. And you don't have to take the medicine, right? What medicine? The ADHD medicine, right? Like one doesn't have to do it, right? I don't know about that, but I don't take no medicine. <laughs> Huh? I don't take no, oh, I don't take any medicine. You know, since you started, you became better. For <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking, do you start taking the medicine? <laughs> point being is, oh, funny guy. I don't condone no, no medication, by the way. Huh? But mm. any anyway, point being is that work out the theory of constraints. The second thing, Al Bakr, is, bro, sometimes it's your skill that's whack. Mm. Like the, 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 the reason why you're struggling in business is because you're actually bad at what you are trying to do. Trying to do. And I feel like, and by the way, this is just a hunch and a theory, and I could be completely wrong here. And I just want to mention that I'm not, I'm not attacking someone. I'm just identifying a trend. So Iman Ghazi, he came out and he told people how to set up agencies. Right? And the idea was, and I think it's a very smart idea. And there's people that have made money from it. Is that you can find people in Pakistan and the Philippines and Brazil and India that actually are skilled, that can provide work and service mm -hmm. at like a 20th of what you would pay someone in the West. 
Uh -huh. What you do is you connect with these guys mm -hmm. and then you reach out to business owners that need those services. And your job is just to do reach outs, reach outs, reach outs all day, every day. Right? Mm -hmm. And those guys are going to actually fulfill. fulfill in Pakistan and the Philippines. Makes sense. And you're just giving them a fraction of the money. That's a very smart business idea. But the thing is this, is that so many brothers got involved in this. That so many youth got involved in this. And they started paying money for that course, purchasing it. And it's like now there are VAs everywhere. Sorry, there, there, there are these guys that are reaching out to you with agencies everywhere. I get DMs like two, three times a day. And I, I actually remember <laughs> like one time I actually was thinking to myself, like, where is this coming from? Like yeah. I'm getting all these young brothers that are just sending me these loom videos. I thought it was from Hustlers University. It might even be, I might be, like I said, I might be completely wrong, mm. but I assumed that it was from what Iman Ghazi was pushing because that's exactly what he's pushing, right? But I'm saying, what you have to understand is that I, as a business owner, when you send me that video, mm. you have to understand there is no way I'm taking it seriously unless you can demonstrate to me your skill. Like, as far as I'm concerned, you're a young brother who's reaching out to me. Trying I to respect get a, the hustle. Trying to get a first client. You're trying to get a first client. I respect the hustle. But you've got to show me you're good. You've got to show me you're good. But you can't show me you're good if you haven't already done the skill. And I personally don't know. So how are they supposed to... You know, it reminds me of, you know, how people mm -hmm. say that, like, all jobs want you to have X amount of experience. Yeah. But it's like, bro, so we're supposed to get the experience if every job's telling me, get the experience first By and then we'll give you the job. First. By doing it for free. But these dons that reach out to you, do they not say to you, don't like it? Usually Some of them say do it for free, say, right? Yeah, do it for free. But I still don't believe, but, but for me, you have to understand, that's good. But if you want to get someone like my, my attention, I, I, unless you can show me proof that you're good, even allowing you to do it for free is a waste of my time. Do you understand? Oof. Which brings me on to the next point, mm. which is that you have to implement this stuff mm. for yourself. If you're providing mm. social media marketing agency service, yeah. right? And I go into your Instagram and I can see that you have not even done that for yourself. I'm never going to believe you. Like that's stage one. I will give a guy an opportunity for, like for example, there was a brother, right? Mm. What's his name? Ahmed the Musafir? Yeah. Yeah, he's a brother. He, he makes content traveling the world. Mm. And you put out a post once saying who is willing to do some social media work for the car rental company that you have a partnership in, right? Why did he stick out to you? His page itself was banging. He was getting views. He clearly he understood the algorithm. He understood trending. I had to get what, what I was looking for. Right. Results. And that's the difference when you, re when you reach out and when I go on your page and I can see that you've actually done something. Mm. Do you understand? Like this brother reached out to me the other day and he was like, bro, um, I like what you're doing, but you know, I think you could improve your social media strategy a little bit. I'd love to be able to help you. So I looked at his page and there's nothing there. Do you know what I'm saying? And I figured to myself like, I, how did you have the audacity to send me that message? I've been, like, you have to understand, I didn't get offended. So I, it's not coming from Facebook Agro, it's just to make that clear. It's yeah, not, oh, clear. it's not coming from Facebook Agro. I was going to say, well, Bukhari corrected his teacher when he was no, no, a no, little no, kid. No, that's, and that's, 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 that's no, going to fall. If, if you don't understand the spirit in which, I'm, in, in which I'm trying to say this, then... Long you're, not, you're, you're not RICP. <laughs> you're not RICP, do you get me? But <laughs> for the, the channel. The, the point that I mentioned is that you have to understand, yeah, that it's unreasonable for you mm. to assume that I'm going to take you seriously mm. when I've been doing this for 10 years. And clearly... Mm. I've got some stripes in the game. Just look at my page. Just look at it. And then look at yours. Right? And just look at yours. It's like an absolutely like overweight, bummy, unattractive guy who's trying to marry a princess. <laughs> it's like, bro. You're the princess. They've no. given up some. <laughs> No, 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 the point that I'm saying is about just the audacity, like, uh, what even made you think you could ask, do you get me? Yeah, you so I messaged back and I said, bro, can I help you with your organic strategy? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't respond to me. I was, and I actually would have helped him for free. Because I don't mean, I, well, I'm, I'm joking, right? I'm having some fun here. I, I mean well for my brothers, do you mm. get me? But point being is that, bro, it's like, you have to understand how that's being seen. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I laughed when I saw the message. I laughed. Mm. I laughed, bro. Mm. I was like, ah, what are you talking about? Implement this for yourself. Implement it for yourself. Brothers are coming to me saying, oh, I'm in high ticket sales. 
Have you ever, ever closed the high ticket sale? It's funny, there's a brother I was speaking to yesterday. Actually, he's a good brother, Alam Bele. He, uh, he, uh, what do you do? I'm in the high ticket sales space. He asked you. No, I asked him. He said, I'm in the high ticket sales space. Okay, Alam Bele. So, uh, how many clients you got? None. <laughs> He's just starting off, isn't it? I know, no, no. I know, I hear you, but then, but then, but, but look, when you say I'm in the high ticket sales space. It's not live, bro. No, I don't, you can't say you're in the space if you don't have clients. Why not? That's my industry. I've just started off, that's my industry. No, you're trying to get into the high ticket sales space. No, I'm in there. You're interested, I've you're not studying. Clients. No, I, I, I you're not in say there. You are. So what means you're in or not? Just, I, I know how to do it. But how do you know you have to, you've not got a single client that you've fulfilled on to know that you have, that you know how to do it or not. I'm not saying I'm great. I'm not saying I'm succeeding in the space. Anyway, I'm, I'm just not, in the space. I'm not getting this brother because 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 he done something sick afterwards. Okay. So as I'm speaking with him, it was he was like, uh, I've got my first call in an hour. I'm nervous. So I was like, okay, I love it. Well, at least he's doing something. Yeah. Do you get me? Then after the call, he's like, ah, oh, he messaged me back. Ah, oh, closed it. <laughs> So he's got, he's got 100% close rate right now. Allah yeah. Allah. But that made me happy. And now, but, I, by definition, he's in now the sales. Now he's in the sales. Do you get me? So the point that I was getting at was that, do you see the difference? Mm. Now, look, if I need a closer one day, mm. you better believe I'm going to think of him. Think of him. You close your first guy. Now, okay, it could have been a complete fluke. Fluke, right? But I'm still. You had manners, we were speaking, I could see you're on it, you're actually trying, you got a lead, you close the lead, first lead, first call, first close. 100% success rate. So I'm saying, uh, that, that brother's going to stay in my mind somehow, somewhere. Mm. Did you, did you get so the look, point? the bottom line is, get the results first. Get That's the results, do whatever it takes to get the results. results. So for, like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another example. There's a brother that lives in my building, yeah? So when we go to Salah and stuff, usually catch him, we walk and we talk uh, as we're coming back. And he set up a lead acquisition company for real estate agents, mm. right? And he was initially, his thing was, because um, he needed to get clients. So his thing was, look, I'll work for you for free, if I'm not mistaken. And I would just get a commission based on your closes, the actual closes that you Is get. Is it work for you? No, as in the, the, the real estate agents. Ah, oh, okay. Getting them leads, qualified leads for real estate purchases. And he only gets paid from them once he gets a commission. Now, I said to him, I said, look, I, I don't believe that's... And I actually had this in the same conversation with two brothers recently as well who were on the right to school, school um, who were doing some AI calling thing, right? And I was saying, look, your result or your input ends at the lead. Like you could give them the most qualified lead, but they've got a dead sales team, so they fumbled that lead. You're not going to get paid for that. That doesn't make sense to me. That your payment, your results are based off of are not in your hands. Obviously, first of all, Allah's hands. But all you're doing is giving them qualified leads. Like your payment shouldn't be based on qualified leads. But I understand if at the beginning, when you're starting off to reduce the risk on the client side, to incentivize them to take you on, you say to them, okay, cool. You know what? For the first X amount of time only pay me if my leads actually convert. But eventually you want to get to a point where you're getting paid per qualified lead that mm -hmm. you're generating for them, not based on how many sales they're making, because that's not in your control. You could mm -hmm. give them, the, like I said, the best lead and they fumble it. They, you know, for every reason, alienate the customer and they don't want to buy, but you still did your job. You still got your result. But at the beginning, you have to take a different approach because you don't have any, as you said, you don't have any reputation, you don't have any results. Are you in the space? Are you not? I don't know, bro. You just you were born yesterday and now you're coming out saying, you know, you came out the womb saying, I'm in the sales space. So get your stripes in first, then you can come to people and say, look, these are the results that I've got. These are This is what I've achieved. This is what I've done. This is this is how much money my previous clients have made. This is how much I'm going to charge you now. Shall I tell you one thing that will shock me and, 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 and amaze me? Because look, a lot of these brothers have, have uh, marketing agencies, right? Mm. And the you have to understand that your fundamental job is to help people get leads, mm. right? But you yourself are struggling to get leads, right? Okay, so that says a lot, number one. Number two, you want someone to give you a second look. People are not even interested in terms of looking at you in terms of a free opportunity. Let me show you how to grab their attention. Let me show you if you did something, how you grab their attention. Go and study that person's product and offer. 
and look at their social media and identify what their ideal customer is, right? And then create a Google sheet or a spreadsheet. Have a bunch of columns. One column that, you know, mentions the person, you know, name, link to their website, to their Instagram, email. phone number, email, and what they do. And what they do. And go and get a hundred leads. And then DM the person and say, ah, here are a hundred leads. These are literally your ideal customer. If you want me to do this for you, daily, weekly, just let me know. Mm. Like, you see something like that. No, we've got AI to do that. And that's another thing. <laughs> you, probably, you can even get AI to do that for people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can, and, and let me give you the AI. It's called Clay. C-L-A-Y. Go to Clay. It's got a free version. Hmm. It's got a university, i.e. an education, uh, an educational course that teaches you how to use the, the tool. It will literally scrape the internet, finding you ideal leads for your customers. And you can just say, hey, here you go. But I'm saying, do something that makes people think, well, wow. Like, do, do you get me? Just do something that makes people think, wow. So look, that's the second thing, which was what? Improve your skill and demonstrate the proficiency of your skill on yourself, in your own business. Like, for example, if I DM, let me tell you something. I also reach out to people, by the way. I also reach out to my idol clients. Because idol clients, you know when you have, just generally speaking, you know when you have like your idol, idol, idol client, this one, his, his lifetime value is going to be high, he's going to pay me a lot. It's, it's just, it's a 10 out of 10. Of course it makes sense. He's probably not going to come run, come after you even if he sees a video, right? You've got to go after that person and convince him to do business with you. So there's some people that I do reach out to. Now here's the thing. I have a 100% response rate. Whenever I reach out to someone. That's when you've got 184,000 followers. So my point is that I have something. I have something to offer. Like, as in I've got, I've, that's my point is that when you have some type of a foundation, mm. then people are like, okay, let me take him seriously. Now, of course, it took me years to build what I have. But let me be honest with you. People will respond if you've got even 5% of what we have. But I have something. Most people come with nothing. Do you get me? The next thing is that, okay, cool. Now that you've identified what the bottleneck is, number one, number two, you've improved your skill and you've become better. Now it's time for you to solve your lead acquisition problem. Right? So, and by the way, just to mention, if you're in that space where, you, where you've got VAs and your job is just to get the clients, then you've got to make sure those VAs are performing at the highest level, right? Because your job is not to actually deliver on the fulfillment. But the point is that whatever the promise is that you're giving, whether you are the guy that's delivering the promise or you've got employees, team members that are delivering it underneath you, you've got to make sure that you're, you're skilled at delivering that promise that you're claiming that you can deliver on. The third thing is, is lead acquisition. We just got to get good. You've just got to get good at lead generation. And I'll be honest with you, bro. This is the fundamental skill of business. And you can't, I can't explain to you how, how, bad you look when you've got a a digital marketing agency of some sort and it's clear you struggle with leads it's clear you struggle with leads do you understand it's clear so my question is how would a person who's just started off get leads so it's about becoming proficient in that particular skill right so when you ask how to get leads bro there's like hundreds of ways to get leads but if we simplify it, when well, cold outreach is one of them, right? So, so right. So there's, so then do more of it. <laughs> do you get me? Like, as in, if 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 cold outreach. You just said if you don't have the stats to back it up, don't bother cold outreach. Not necessarily. I'm 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 not saying. I'm I'm talking about you've we're, in. We're talking chronologically, right? Mm. Like you've improved your skill. You've demonstrated that you're good. Also, as in now you've got the stats now to back you've got it up. The you've got stats to back it up. Now you're gonna go out there and do the cold outreach. Do you understand? But what I'm what I'm saying is that some brothers, not everyone is, is doing cold outreach, by the way. Do you get me? That's that's a particular audience. I'm saying So how did they get the stats without the cold outreach? That's what the right center school's for, right? No, I mean look, number one, you do it yourself. Like you build your own page. You build, you build your own business. Through your own organic service. social media marketing. Through organic social media marketing. You reach out to people and you offer to do things for free and you make them compelling what? Offers. Mm. Like like I said, for example, give a guy 100 leads. Do you understand? Mm. You go to a friend. 
say, like, let me just deliver this for you. Mm. Right? J get some proof. You must find a way to get proof. Just to be clear, brothers, every single thing that we sold, we went and did it for free first. Like, even before we launched Sunnah Match, which was our matchmaking app. But I, I actually help people get married actively, multiple, multiple. And so I was you like, understood how it works, what people need okay, to so, work. Yeah, so now let's do an app. Mm. Before we taught people how to set up their own Umrah company through the Umrah setup course, we helped multiple people. Yeah. Well, you help multiple people set up successful Umrah companies mm. because those are testimonies and case studies that we're going to use because people are going to ask. That wasn't the intention at the time, but we didn't. Even, I didn't even know that we were going to end up set, set, right. selling it. But and before we launched the Righteous and Rich School, we I, we spent a year getting in touch, or just under a year getting in touch. With idle clients and working with them for free. Mm. Scaling their business with the permission of Allah Jal, before we launched it, we could say, This is what we've done. And if you'd like us to do the exact same thing for you, tafaddal. Come. Do you understand? So the, the, coming back onto the point of lead acquisition. So Apple lead acquisition, very simple. It's very straightforward. It's two things. It's either inbound or outbound. Right? Outbound is you reaching out to people. Whether that's you doing it yourself, whether that's an AI doing it on your behalf, whether that's an VA. an algorithm that's doing it, a VA that's doing it, whether that's an AI that's doing it, right? Whether you've outsourced it to people to go and do cold calling or cold outreach for you, that's outbound, right? Then there's inbound, which is people are coming to you. to you. That could be search engine optimization. That could be creating content that keeps you top of mind so when people need something they're like oh, let me reach out to this guy right here so you just got to pick one of those I have a personal affinity and bias towards organic social media content because that's what we build our businesses off and everyone that we've trained beginning first to the last has been on the back of that with the last permission I've also come to really really respect and admire people who use SEO search engine optimization because that's literally free traffic that's coming your way through Google. Mm -hmm. um, I also can see the wonders in cold outreach, especially with the advent of AI and all of these tools that scrape the internet for you in minutes and bring you all of these leads, right? I'm saying you, you, you take your pick, mm. but pick one. And just one, just one. Like actually for us, we didn't do no code outreach for the last 10 years. Nor do we do paid advertising except for a few, except for a few experiments here and there, mm. right? We didn't do affiliate marketing except for a few little things here and there. We did one thing, organic social media. Pick one, pick whatever it is, just pick one. Just make sure that the one that you pick, it facilitates for your market, right? It facilitates for your market. Assuming, again, I, I can't think of, a, of an actual scenario where this would apply but just imagine that you want to go into seo but your market is just not on on on, on any search engine that wouldn't make any sense right so the thing is just make sure just make sure that your market is facilitated for by this and that's it you just go in and just learn that one particular field craft go in and then getting leads becomes something that's so easy so let me ask you a question right mm -hmm. how does righteous and rich school solve these problems how is it different to things that we've mentioned so far even the Umrah setup, for example, Umrah setup, or mm. you mentioned uh, Iman, so in simple, Iman Ghazi. We, we said the seven steps, the seven figures, right? That's that's what that's that's the the primary thing that we give consultancy, coaching, and training with regards to in the Righteous Summit School. It's the seven steps, the seven figures. So seven steps are. So number one, it's optimizing your offer. Number two, it's your organic social strategy. Number three, it's your pre-launch and launch strategy. Number four, it's funnel optimization. Number five, it's high ticket sales strategy. Number seven, it's fulfillment. Number seven. It's the, the, the Deen of Allah, help from Allah. And then we've got a bunch of other courses that are supportive courses in terms of paid ad strategy, how to make an organizational chart, financial management, um, SEO, blah, blah, blah. In simple terms, every single one of those steps is a completely different part of your business that will become a bottleneck for your business at a particular given time. And then that training will help you. But it's not just the training. To be honest, that's that, 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 that's the, the lower end of the spectrum in terms of benefit. Real, the real benefit comes from the coaching that we provide. And that brings me on to another point, which is that 
again, you will not be able to become a masterful businessman if you don't have some type of coaching or mentorship. And, and I feel like that is what really sets us apart from everyone else, is that not only do we provide you training in all of the various different areas of business, all of the gaps that a lot of these other courses left out, understandably so, because they weren't trying to teach you about how to establish company values amongst your teams so you can make the best out of them. They would just teach you a particular opportunity, which they did. They fulfilled their promise, right? But I'm saying our job was, okay, cool. There's a reason why we say we help you scale. There's a reason why we're not trying to help you start a business. That's not what we do. We don't teach people how to start a business. We teach you how to scale after you've already started. Anyways, that brings me to the next point, which is the mentorship. Bro, you, 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 you are fooling yourself into thinking that one course is going to do you without coaching or mentorship. It's like trying to learn how to drive just through videos that you watch online. Impossible. If you take that, the moment you jump in a car, you're going to have a car accident. You're going to put your life and other people's lives in danger. You can take a lot of losses, maybe even jail time. That's what it's like setting up a business without a coach. You could do all the courses, coaches, all the courses that you want. You could do all of the courses, all the training, watch all the videos and all the podcasts that you want. But you will struggle. You will take losses. You will make mistakes. You'll be stuck. Okay, but I read this best-selling book that told me everything beginning to Z, uh, be, uh, you know, from, from, from A to Z. You're right. But you can't see the blemish on your face. That's why you look in the mirror every morning. Because the mirror tells you what you can't see. Likewise, your coach identifies for you what you can't see. So having a coach will identify your problems for you quicker. And it's true. If you were to carry on trying to learn how to drive over the course of a year or two or three or four or five, eventually you'll learn how to drive, right? Just by purely doing it. But how long would it take? And how many cars would you have written off in that process? Likewise, how long would it take you to actually get there in terms of your business before you're like, you know what, bro? I finally made it. But here's the problem. Getting a coach or a mentor is expensive, which is one of the reasons why we set up Righteous and Rich School in the way that we did, where pretty much every other day, you can jump on a call with one of our elite executive team members who will then give you that one-on-one -on -one advice. Do you understand? Every Sunday it's you, every Monday it's me. Yeah. I was head of sales and marketing on, I think, Wednesday. But you know, I, I'm not even trying to sell it in this. Well, I'm not even trying to sell it. Go get a mentor wherever you want. I'm just letting you know what you need. Look, we're running out of time. The last maybe one or two things that were mentioned, one and then maybe one more, is bro, the importance of branding, man. Like, mm. what you have to stand understand. Out. Yeah, you have to stand out, bro. Like, you, the, what, what's the thing that makes you different to everyone else? You have to understand, okay, there's a book that was written called Blue Ocean Strategy, right? And um, I, don't, I don't recommend most people to read the book. It, it, it's going to go over most people's heads. But I don't, it went, a lot of it went over my head. Okay. A lot of it went over my head. <laughs> but it's like, it's like real corporate stuff. But, but the principle that the guy mentions in the book is really good. If you, if you want to understand the principle, read Russell Brunson's Expert Secrets. He has a whole chapter on it where he summarizes it for you, right? But basically, the, the, the point is that you've got blue oceans and you've got red oceans. A red ocean is, a, is an ocean that's bloody. It's got a lot of sharks, mm. right? It's a lot of sharks and they're all hungry and they're just eating up all the, all the little fish, which means that the waters are going to be bloody. Now, does it make sense for you as a shark now to go into an ocean that's blue? Sorry, an ocean that's red that already has blood in competition or an ocean that's blue where there are all these beautiful fish, right? All these nice fish that you could just eat. Nemo, Dory, Dode. Yam them all, right? I was going to say flounder, but that, that, that's the poisonous one, isn't it? Uh, flubber was the I have no idea what it's not a fish is it Flubber is the the green goo the green goo yeah <laughs> don't watch no movies this is, don't watch this, any movies yeah don't watch any movies my childhood just anyways, like to wrap it up anyway a blue ocean is an ocean in which there is no competition that's my point mm. now here's the thing you're setting up a digital marketing agency just like everyone else right so how do you make a blue how do you enter a blue ocean just keep swimming just be different just be different, like find a way to be different. Maybe you solve a problem for a very particular type of business. Like you said, you had a guy who provides, gets leads for what? Real estate agents. Real estate agents. Just find- and he had worked in real estate before, so he had experience, he understood the needs and yeah. the, the, the industry, the market. And maybe you can combine two or three different things to create your own unique thing. Like for example, I'm not the first person that's provided coaching service to Righteous and Rich, nor am I the first person who taught an info product at your course. Mm. We actually combined all three. Right? That, that, that's what makes us unique mm. is that there's training and there's coaching yeah. and there's community.
So, bro, you look. We don't have time to go into this, but bro, just like study branding, and, and, and we can go deeper. Like, what's your story? What's your mission? Sometimes people will buy from you, even though you're new to the industry, and there's other guys that are way more experienced that have been there more than you, because your story is deep. Mm. Like, what's your story? What's your struggle? What's your mission? Like, imagine when I come and I say, "Yo, bro, we're here to help people make money for the sake of our lives." And we're like, we want to become millionaires. So you can use that wealth. Put it back into the deen. Do you get me? But that's very different now too. I'm just here to make money. So, do you understand? So, what's your what's your unique thing? Anyway, look, you're giving funny eyes, so I have to stop, guys. I'm sorry. I had so much more to share with you. Just the last thing I mentioned, and I'll say it in a sentence, even though it deserves more, is to repent for your sins. That's the last one. Sometimes you've got sins that you don't even realize you've got are the reason why your business is not even growing. Mm. So, barakallah, feet barakallah. Wrap it up. Just keep swimming, guys. Blue ocean Swim Shut up <laughs> You know what it is guys We started late So yeah. I didn't get to finish But Time's up That's why I felt a bit rushed I had so much to share with you Subhanakallah 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 Alhamdulillah 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 Alhamdulillah